All right, we're back at the window. Having some interesting memories. Mm. All kinds of interesting memories. Come on, guys. You know, we're in a vivarium is what it is, you know. And if you look back on our videos, you'll know what we're talking about. That the earth is gone. Mm -hmm. The earth is gone. We've been displaced. <laughs> and nobody realizes it because it happened overnight. It happened actually around December 3rd, a couple of years back. We have the anniversary shows. John had me remove some of those videos. I didn't have you remove them. They were troubling you because you were afraid that you would be perceived as insane. But it's fine because your judgment is very good. And we, the, the world simply wasn't ready for it yet. And I was not wanting anyone to perceive you as insane either. So we needed the public support uh, and sometimes omission of information is very necessary right so we removed some of those videos but if you look back on our videos on the vivarium hello guys hi birds oh look at that beautiful starling what a beautiful brown breast she has mm. honey if your arms are cold you're gonna have to end up wearing a sweater the shawl is not cutting it for you at the window i know you're right mm -hmm. you is right baby so, a lot of memories this morning about, again, still airing grievances. You know, when will it end? Mm. When on earth will it end? Mm. When will it end? Oh, feels nice and warm now. Mm. Mm. Time to go back to bed. Look at them go. They're going to want more. Yeah, we'll, we'll break up a few more before we hit the hay. Let's just decompress a little bit. No, you don't have to sing. Nothing. It's okay. Did a great job with that Tracy Ullman song. Thanks. Hi, Tracy. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. You're not the only one, honey. I know. I know, Tracy. I know that. I know you know that, but I'm telling you anyway. A mm. little bit of dark night of the soul going here. Yeah, a little bit of dark night of the soul. That's okay. Understandable. Mm. Yeah, they like the corners. Mm. They do. They do like the corners, the birds. Get in there, get in there. Mm. Lena, I know you're trying to keep it not so crummy, but that's kind of hard to do when you're feeding birds. Yeah, I know. I'm going to have to shake this thing out, though. Yeah. That's all right. They got a good scene going here. What I could do is just... Maybe I should get rid of this bag. It's in the way. Yeah, I think you should, too. All right. This bag is... This bag is in the way, I'm sorry to say. My Lord, my Lord. Mm. Oh, God. What else we got going over here today, guys? Mm. Kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty foods. Yeah, kitty, kitty foods. Kitty, kitty, feeling shitty. Nah, feel good. I actually do feel real good. I feel, I feel fine, you know? Mm. Radio reading. Radio reading. <laughs> Yellow is my bad medicine. Bad medicine. And that's what it is. Yeah, right. Johnny's love is... And the love of God mm, can often be a bitter, bitter pill to swallow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh. And you got pain and you got anguish and you got... 
facing facts about people not loving you the way they should and not loving you as much as you love them, right? That's a hard pill. Mm. So I guess the, the fact is with those people, I just love them more than they were ever going to be capable of loving me, right? Yeah. That's about right. That's about right, honey. Hi, Sandy. Yeah. What about Christopher? He loves you. You bring him to tears. You move him. He loves you more than he's ever loved anyone down here. I know that. That's why I'm able to reach him now, is because of your relationship with him. And he is a difficult case because he's infuriating. And he gets upset with you and you get upset with him. And in his case, he fell deeply in love with you and he doesn't know what to do with those feelings now. He doesn't know what to do with those feelings now. Well, he still can love me. I love him too. I know. He he he's getting he's getting with it with that. He he really is. You know, it was never with him it really never was about physical although we had that for a few good years, you know, physical closeness. But how could it ever be about that when when John was waiting in the wings and I always sensed like this other energy that was meant for me that I hadn't had yet or I don't know when John came back suddenly everything made sense yeah yes and Christopher feels that way about you he absolutely does that's what makes it so confusing for him because he's still living here with you and he understands everything about the mission, Lena. He understands everything about it. He does, yeah. He understands everything about it. It's just really finally sinking in though, is what it is. All right. Yeah, it's 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 really sinking in now. You're thinking about that movie. Yeah, we wa we're watching a movie, me and John. Mm. And it's called uh, Le Lemon. Yeah. <laughs> and it's about kind of like this psychotic guy. Yeah. yeah, let's get them fed. Right. It's about this like kind of psychotic, very lonely guy yeah. who's an actor. And kind of made me think of Chris's brother, Steven, a little bit. Like, always just not not being uh, famous enough or not being appreciated for being an actor. I always get that feeling with Steve because he always just, like, he was going to go to Cannes for that movie that he's in now. And then he was, like, disinvited by Scorsese. Yeah. Like, his wife was all excited they even got the hotel rooms and everything to go to the Cannes Film Festival. If anyone knows film, that's a big fucking deal. And then he was like, oh, no, we don't have room for you. You can't come. Can you imagine? And he had not a small part in that movie with De Niro and all these other big stars. Mm -hmm. But De Niro, he's in, a, he's in some, some scenes with De Niro. Mm -hmm. So he finally thought he made it. He's going to Cannes, you know? Yeah. And then he's just, like, disinvited. They had to cancel their hotel rooms. His wife, who's, like, really into that whole I want to be famous thing with him. And the thing is, he did the work. He shot this film, and he made this film, and the film is very popular and very well done. Martin Scorsese, come on. He plays a villain in the film. He plays a real nasty doctor who kills Indians, American Indians. Kind of a low-life role. Mm. But nonetheless, he's a good act. He's a decent actor. You have to be to work with Scorsese. So what was I getting at? Nothing. It's just an interesting story. And Marty has... Hi, Marty. Yeah. 
He's told you it's all very premeditated, this whole journey. Really like setting him up for disappointment? Sometimes you do what you gotta do. He's got karma, boy. He seems like he tries to be a good guy. Like, like Bukowski said, don't try. <clears throat> be a genuine good guy. Stop expecting to be rewarded for being a good guy. That's that's a good uh, that's a good uh, thing to mention. If you really want to be a perceived, hey, it shouldn't matter how you're perceived. You should be a good guy because you want to be a good guy. Right. You shouldn't be a good guy because, oh, look at me. I can act like a good guy. Right. You should be a good guy because you want to be a good guy. Right. So that's, that's, the, that's the lesson here. So I guess. All right. Now we're going to get rid of these crumbs. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, get to it. Come on, come on, come on. Love's the greatest thing. So they're all going to eat now. And uh, it's time for the 12 o'clock beetle block. The faith in Christ. Oh, that go through. <laughs> Almost time for the 12 o'clock beetle block. Johnny? Yeah, we gotta get back to bed. You know, you can leave that door closed, that's fine. Well, what if the cats, they can push in, they can get in. All right. Yeah, I'm ready to go back to bed for sure. Mm. Oh, deep breath, everybody. Uh, deep breaths. Oh, another fucking rubber band broke. What else is going to happen? Mm. There we go. Mm. What's happening with them birdies? Let me see. They're not here. Mm, they'll be back. It's a nice trove you left them. Yeah. Nice trova left you. You got noodles galore today and crab meat. Mm. Nothing more wonderful, I tell you right now. All right, let's get moving. I'm cracking. Mm. Uh, let's see what's on that beetle block before we turn off this phone. How's that? Yeah. Dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Yeah, that's that song describes your family and your old friends. They're all a bunch of bums, Lena. Yeah. That's the thing to remember. They're all a bunch of bums. So you were the good you were the good seed. They were all bums. Right. Okay. Mm. So that's the important that's the important bit that I have to tell you today. Is that they're bums. Mm. And you could stop pining for why they didn't love you enough. They didn't love you enough because they simply don't know how. Mm. Because they're bums. Thankless, shithead, shit heel bums. Mm. Your parents, Chris's parents, Nikki and Weezer, Stephen and Renee, Olivia. We don't have to get into Andrea and Theo. They go beyond bummedom. Mm -hmm. Fucking bum city, baby. Bum, bum, bum city. Other ones don't aren't worth mentioning. Mm. These are just the ones that you were supposed to perceive as family. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so these guys look great. Let's take a look at these guys. We worked on them last night. Oh, my God. 
Don't do they not look phenomenal? Hmm. Hey, Tootsie the bunny. Yeah. There's my bunny. Yeah, I would get a bunny rabbit, but this house full of cats, they might be nice to it, but mm, I don't want to take the chance. I would have to be more hands-on. I want another kitten. Yeah, we're going to get a kitten. Maybe we can get some kind of 